right, the tunes are rocking, the knees are knocking, and I am talking to you. My name is Matt Carter, and welcome to episode number 84 of the show right here on Shaw TV, the first show of 2015. Welcome to the new year. Our, our musical guest in behind us right now, we've got the Clams, not to be confused with the Clams, because after all, Clams are chowder, and the Clams, they're much louder. Loving that Celtic Roots Rock style. Looking forward to hearing uh, more tunes, and I think uh, maybe a little talk about Beverage and Haggis later on as well. Also on today's show, well, you know, my jokes, of course, are not the only cheesy thing to be featured today, for Gouda's sake. Anna's going to be talking cheese with cheesemaker Paula Madison. Not to be confused with Billy Madison, which is an on-screen cheese of definitely another kind whatsoever. But I tell you, if you make really good cheese, you can travel the world. After all, Havarti will travel. All right, moving along. Now, Brian, who is arguably the most uh, dexterous of any of us here on the show, he's going to be uh, taking some core issues to heart with some Pilates training. Core issues. Anyways, he's going to be learning some moves with uh, Pilates trainer Paul Horn. And we like to trumpet Horn as one of the best in the business. My main magic man's back in the house, Mr. Michael Barons, of course, the one and only, who's got some uh, more tricks for us today. So get ready for your magic moments with Michael. See if you can use your illusion, too. Now, January is Alzheimer's Awareness Month, and with that in mind, Brian's going to find out with perhaps the biggest uh, provincial fundraiser for BC Alzheimer's Society, and here in Nanaimo, it's the Investors Group Walk for Memories. Great stuff here, and to find out more about it, Brian's going to speak with Jane Pope, who's the Support and Education Coordinator for the BC Alzheimer's Society here in North and Central Vancouver Island. A much more impressive business card than I have, that's for sure. As so, well, uh, Hillary's here. She's going to tell us how to get your uh, dance on, in particular, looking at a salsa dance, so she's going to Find out where you can get into some uh, crazy salsa dance lessons, uh, find out about uh, some dance events, and maybe get a little demonstration as well. And actually, Hillary's going to kick things off on the show today by talking farmers markets in winter. Yes, you got to love out here living on the coast. We're going to head our uh, gaze up toward Qualcomm Beach and find out about farmers market up there. So get your organic, free range, locally grown popcorn ready. This is the show. It's 2015 right here on Shaw TV. Welcome back to the show. Joined today by Mimi Suchuk. She's the market manager of the Qualicum Beach Farmers Market. Mimi, uh, New Year, probably some people's New Year's resolution is to eat local, and uh, that's where the Qualicum Beach Farmers Market comes in. Yeah, I'm sure it is. And this year we're making it easy because we're year round, so we opened our farmers market on January 10th, and we're running right through the year until end of December next year. So you're indo indoors during the winter, right up until May. That's right, yep, right up until the first weekend in May we're indoors. We still have some vendors outdoors. Some of the hardy farmers don't like coming inside. So we have probably about 35, 45 vendors still right now. That's amazing. So I think people get into their heads that, you know, it's winter times, so they can't get access to that same sort of fresh local produce. But you're, you're telling me that's not the case at all. No, not at all. We actually have probably about three farmers right now. And by the end of February, beginning of March, we'll probably be up to five or six. So you can still get kale and carrots and um, lettuce and all the great stuff that you can get in the summertime. You might not be able to see your berries, but lots of greens, lots of produce still out there. Okay, so the, the green stuff is great, but Farmer's Markets, for me, it's all about the baked goods. Tell me where it's at. Yeah, we've got some amazing baked goods. We have some artisan bakers that come. We have, uh, oh, the cinnamon buns, probably my favorite oh, yes. to die for. Yeah, so lots of stuff that you can grab. Um, chocolate croissants, uh, you know, lots of really cool things that you won't be able to get in a grocery store. And also crafty things at the market as well? Yep, we do. Um, we have uh, crafters that come. We're, we're mostly food-based. We're a true farmer's market, so our market has to be 70% food-based and then 30% crafters. But there's some, some really neat stuff that's out there. And you can be sure that if you're getting it at the Qualicum Beach Farmer's Market, it's being made or baked or produced on the island. Absolutely. Local, always. And make it, bake it, grow it. That's our policy. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got some pictures of the market uh, so people can kind of check it out. And yeah. during the summertime, you said you've got some food trucks there. Yeah. Uh, Saturdays from 8.30 till noon. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. And you gotta you say, get up early. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get up early because a lot of people are sold out. By, yeah. By the time oh yeah. It rolls some. Around. I mean, some of our organic farmers are sold out by 10:30. Wow. So you know we're getting more and more. So we've you know we started off with I think two organic farmers. We now have we we will be having four this summer, but we have close to 20 farmers That's that are fantastic. there to choose from in the summer. So lots and lots of options. Where can people find the market? So we're on the corner of Veterans Way and Memorial in Qualicum Beach. Um, if you take the exit off the highway and just drive through Qualicum, you won't miss us. You'll see all Fantastic. the tents. Yeah. And you've got a contest on in January uh, to give people an idea of what to do with their, their produce. Yeah, so the contest is you post a picture on Facebook of something that you've used from the farmer's market. Um, people will comment and like your picture. The one with the most wins a $50 gift certificate to the farmer's market. And then a random person who has commented or liked will win a $50 gift certificate as well. Wow, and you can do a lot with that at a local market. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mimi. People can uh, check out your website. Also go to uh, Facebook, check out Qualicum Beach Farmer's Market. And uh, I can't wait to check it out and uh, get me some of those cinnamon buns. Yes. Thank you so sure. much. All right, next up, over to Anna to tell us about uh, some delicious cheese. Thank you, Hillary. And my guest today is Paula Madison from, actually she lives on Gabriel Island, but she is a cheese maker and she's going to teach me how to make cheese. Welcome, Paula. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the Thanks show. Thanks for having me here. Excellent. Now, you brought some cheeses. Now, you make this cheese. Yeah, I've which made is all amazing. of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is the process? Uh, well, it depends on the kind of cheese that you're making. So with soft cheeses, um, you can make those very easily by going to the grocery store or getting store store-bought milk, also with the hard cheeses as well. Soft cheeses is generally a good place to start because it's Something instant. like this, yeah. Right? yeah, and also the mozzarella we're going to be making because it's more or less instant gratification, which is always good, right? Which is great, yeah. yeah. And that's what's heating back here. Yeah, we've got some mozzarella we'll work with. We'll stretch it and play with it a little bit later. Um, but right now, what we're going to do is we're going to play with a cheese that's called a fromage blanc, which is a, a French sort of cream cheesy type of um, cheese, curd. Excellent. So with cheese, there's uh, the curd curd, which is the, the solids, the, the proteins, um, and then there's the whey. So, um, curds and whey? Curds and whey. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with this, this is just the curd. Can I cut? Can Absolutely, I play? Can I you start can. To play? I've got some gorgeous herb to Provence here. If you want, it's you can. It's very soft. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, and I'm always that. about tasting it and all the rest of it. This is some um, homemade cream cheese that I've made as well, if you want to give oh, that a little taste. I, I do. Yeah. Can I use it. a spoon? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So the cream cheese, I ended up making mm. this the That's smoked yummy. salmon dip, uh, wild oh, is caught, that what that is? yeah, mm. wild caught uh, salmon from uh, Bamfield. I will. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah, Love yeah. Bamfield. Smoked. <laughs> so, so I would say about a teaspoon. Oh, that's heaping. beautiful. Yeah. And you just put Straight it in there. Straight in there. And do you want me to actually? This is what you're taking home. You're not sharing do, this. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Now, do I have to actually nope, touch? You can just put nope, it right in there. Just put it right in there. Yeah. And there's some salt and pepper that if you want. That smells beautiful. There's rosemary, uh, lavender in there, isn't yep, there? Yeah, lavender. There's also some really nice fennel in there. Mm. Wow. Um, so this is a uh, fromage blanc. I also have here a terrine, which is made with uh, goat's cheese, right? Um, okay. Layered with sun-dried tomato as well as pesto, hit with a bit of balsamic reduction. Well, I think which I is need gorgeous. a little bit more herbs yep, in yep. there. <laughs> and if you want to put a little salt and pepper in there as well. And do you normally put some salt in as well? I do, just you know, just enhances to balance the flavor a little bit. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And I I like the Himalayan salt. Yeah, it's beautiful too, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. really beautiful. And then cupcakes yeah, and things that. like that are such a rage these days. So molds, as far as if you want to make them look pretty <gasps> for serving. That's a hard just shame. Go to any place that has a big baking section, even Michael's, and you can get all sorts of different kinds I of like shapes. Pepper. Yeah, it's <laughs> good. And then, and so then I stir, stir it all, all together. Up. Yep. So these cheeses, when you're using a gallon of milk, will produce about a pound of cheese. <sighs> Wow. Which is amazing. So the cultures in this specific cheese, um, prior to adding salt, you can actually portion them off and freeze them, which is fantastic. You know, it, it can last for a month. No, no you said I, this is my spoon here. You just get in I'm and gonna go try for it. it. Absolutely. See if it's enough stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And obviously that'll infuse and develop mm, as it that's goes. That's beautiful. Yeah, nice. Wow. Love it. And then now. So when I you're ready, it. you can put it into the mold. Mm, okay. Excellent. Look at that. Oh, this is just cheesecloth, right? Yep, it's just cheesecloth. I've wet it so that it doesn't stick and 
and do you just havoc. push it down yep. kind of firmly? For sure. Yep. So with the soft cheeses, um, it's usually a 24-hour period. There are certain cultures that you use in cheese making that help enhance right. and develop flavors. Right. Uh, and then you know those sit in and ripen and uh, you know start producing those beautiful flavors. Uh, and then you would drain them for about 12 hours uh, by gravity. So generally, what's called a hanging bag or hangs, really fine butter like muslin. A, right. You can use that as well. Excellent. Um, so we're just going to let that sort of take its shape. And Perfect. then afterwards, you're going to be able to bring home appetizers Perfect. for home. I'll put a little weight on so that. So we're going to take a little break right now, okay. and then we're going to come back to our mozzarella. Sounds great. Excellent. And we're going to go over to Matt with our musical guest. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Anna. I say, uh, I dare you say I'm looking forward to your next cheese making segment later on in the hour. Dare you say, all right, now before the rest of the... Uh, okay, thanks, Todd. Now, before, before the director says any more curd words, let's move on to our interview. So, oh, should I just leave? Should I, should I just leave? No, anyways, I'm here. Uh, you want to hear cheesy? I'm right out here with Al Black. His friends call him Paint It. And we're here representing the clans. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Hey, you're welcome. All right, so Al, you've uh, drawn the short uh, straw. You're there on the mic. Uh, please tell us a little bit about each of the members of the band here. Well, there's Len. He's the accordion player. He's nothing but trouble. <laughs> Here's Earl, and he's the upright, obviously. Angela Fiddle. Scotty guitar, and of course I'm Al Black, the drums with my full drum set here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, way to extend the... Uh, the, the I know, I'm not going to do a Keith Moon thing tonight, though, okay, I decided yeah, yeah, against yeah. it, yeah. All right, so uh, interest you guys off the top is uh, Celtic Roots Rock, which I stole from a, from a social media site, so tell okay. us, uh, describe what a clan's show looks and sounds like. Well, we're never really quite sure half the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we kind of just uh, go with the momentum of the gig and all that. Basically, we, we, we take traditional music and we add rock and roll to it. We add a bit of punk to it and we just and put a lot of fun and a lot of beer drinking and, uh, <laughs> and uh, basically we go with the audience, how the audience is going, right? And if we have a tough audience, uh, we turn them around and like us in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned uh, some of the traditional tunes, or um, I guess we'll even say cover tunes you guys play. Uh, just yeah. some examples of some of the artists you might cover, some of the tunes maybe people uh, don't know. Well, the traditional bands like, say, the Irish Rovers, of course, right? Which is from this area. Um, and then more uh, modern bands, such as the Pokes, which is who we're really influenced by a lot oh, okay. by. Yeah, um, the Tossers, um, Dropkick Murphys. Nice. Yeah, from, the, from Boston, right? And... Um, Basically, you know, that, that type of stuff. Uh, we have so many influences in there, and plus we write our own original stuff as well, right? We started off as a cover band because to survive and to start, you have to play covers. It's just the way it is, right? Um, Angela and myself, we write um, the songs, our originals and all that, and we're just in the studio now recording that and getting oh, that nice. all done, yeah. Nice, so the, the original songs, is it sort of on the same line, still Celtic uh, roots, or what, what is some influence behind some of these songs? Uh, myself, uh, more the pokes, more, more of a, a rocking sort of a, a train going down the tracks close to derailing but never does <laughs> yeah, yeah. right and Angela writes more of the traditional stuff and gets our gets her roots in there and all that so it we are really the clans we've got influences from everything and mm -hmm. that's kind of why how that name came about I was actually quite surprised the name wasn't taken I was actually asked in terms of the clans uh, but with two ends yes what's the story behind the spelling uh, this old old traditional spelling that's oh, okay. originally how the, the word was spelled okay, and nice. that that was from my mom. <laughs> she so, told me so that. I didn't say that. <laughs> so now, uh, just a little more about Celtic music. Um, yep. in the, the scene on Vancouver Island, is it strong? Are there other bands out there? Are there venues that are particularly good to go see Celtic music in case people are interested? Well, it, see, here's it's the <laughs> thing <laughs> is... Yeah, that's a, <laughs> Everyone starts laughing. How do I answer that? <laughs> Traditional? Yes. You know, um, where there's no drums, right? Which I'll have no part of, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, for what we're doing now, we're really, I gotta say, we're the first band that's doing it. Nice. There is a, a band down in Ladysmith that's doing something similar, but they've taken more the, the, uh, the sound of the Mahones with the electric guitar a bit more distorted, a bit heavier. And we've decided to take the more traditional, add the rock and roll to it, but keep the acoustic guitar and the more folky sound to it, right? Nice. And doing that. As for playing, um, th it was a little tough in the beginning because everybody thinks you're gonna you know do Irish eyes or smiling and all that type of stuff right so we uh, learned pretty quick we had to go in and just do a quick little demo and put our stuff out there we've been together about a year and uh, it's uh, it's really starting to work out now so we're getting a show every month nice. in Nanaimo which is big 
an enamel, Absolutely. that's really big to do, right? Yeah. All right, sorry to interrupt here. We do have to wrap this up quickly, but uh, we're gonna hear some more, another song here in a moment. But yeah. where else can people hear you play uh, out in the community? Okay, well, we're doing Pipers on the 24th. That's Robert Burns' celebration. It's very informal. Um, you can't bring your kilt, though. Can you bring your own haggis, or is there like an uncorked? Uh, I'm actually buying a haggis. <laughs> I'm buying a haggis. <laughs> there'll be, of course, there'll be haggis. Perfect. I'm, I got Scottish influence in me, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I may even try and address the haggis. It'll be. And not as opposed to undress the haggis. Undress the haggis. Which is just, just I know. really gross. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, I was, was kind of, can I show my socks? <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. last thing we do before we go on. Okay. All right, uh, Charlotte, I don't know if you can see these here. Uh, uh, Let's lose up. Whoa. So as you see, Guinness represented Guinness, yes. on the socks. It doesn't yes. get much more legit than that. Yeah. So. All right, so let's get these guys back to the music and the clans. Thank you guys so much uh, for being here. We're going to hear a song now called Goodbye Dark Skies. Which is their original. Original tune right here on the show. Shot TV. Right by me. Okay, ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Doors open before my eyes. There's only truth, there are no lies. Sadness has no place here. Welcome to the world where there is no fear. troubles behind we all need a place to escape cross on over to an open gate although you are only there in your mind it's a hidden place no one else can find truth there are no lies sadness has no place here welcome to the world where there is no fear hello morning goodbye dark skies this is the place where we never ask why so wipe them tears from your eyes come on in and leave your troubles behind come on in and leave your troubles behind and that was the clans we have with me I have with me here today uh, Paul Horn who is a certified Pilates trainer and he has this apparatus here, which is called the Pilates Reformer? Correct. Okay, and you're going to put me through a couple of exercises. Yes. This is aligned with the original equipment that Joseph Pilates designed. It, it's based off the original design. The original designs were made out of wood. Okay. But uh, these ones are a little bit more portable. You can stand them up, so they're a little bit, they save a little bit more space. Okay. So Good. And you're a Pilates trainer. Before we go further, you're yes. at Corey Sanchez. And Correct. We have the... Uh, website how people can reach you but let's yeah. get into this piece of equipment all right well the exercise we're going to perform is called Eve's lunge and it was created by Eve Gentry so you're okay. going to place the knuckle of your big left toe just yep. right in front there you're going to okay. place your right heel up against that shoulder block okay 
Now from there you want to come up nice and tall. Now the key to Pilates is to getting the core engaged. So you want a little lift in the pelvic floor, a gentle okay. draw of the belly button. Okay. And now all you're going to do is drop into a lunge, but you're going to squeeze that right glute as you drop into that lunge. Okay. And then you're going to come straight back up. Now. You always want to make sure that you're keeping that glute fired, keeping yeah. the core engaged, but relax the hands okay. and relax the arms. So okay. we'll always create tension in areas of the yeah. body. Okay. So as you exhale, you want to drop straight down and press that heel into that shoulder block and then come straight come back, back up. up. Good. Now this exercise is really beneficial for a number of the population. So if you sit, sit a good majority of the day, yeah. your glutes are stretched out, there's restricted blood flow, so they kind of turn off a little bit. People with hip replacements, people mm -hmm. with sciatic problems, will all benefit from that. Cause so how many reps of these do you have to do? You're gonna do about eight repetitions. Okay. So it's nice and slow. You use the, let the breath dictate the tempo, so it's not super fast, and there's no momentum, it's all controlled. Good. So as you exhale, you're gonna drop straight I down. Can you feel keep that. that? Keep yep. that front knee right over that ankle. Yep. And again, keep that chin Good. and chest nice and tall. All right. And I can feel that right through the even the hip flexors. Absolutely, that opens up the hip, and then it contracts the glute. So when your hip flexors are short from sitting all day, yep. you strengthen the glute, open up the hip flexor. Okay, Excellent. wonderful. Now we're gonna look at a different, and people, Oh, I gotta get my legs back going here, <laughs> is to work on the glute, and you said specifically the glute medius muscle. Glute medius, yes. So not only do the glute shut off, but we typically don't use the glute meds. So you're gonna place your left foot about hand distance away from that shoulder block. Now, okay. when you place your right foot up there, you want the hips level, and again, you're gonna bring yourself okay. up nice and tall. So all of your stability and all of your power starts from the core, yep. and then we work outwards. We try not to work from out inward. It doesn't quite work Good. that way. And again, you're gonna let that breath dictate the tempo. So as you exhale, you're gonna lengthen that leg out. Okay, Now, not Great. leaning into it. So the spring load wants to push you over my way. Yes. And the glute med high up on that left hip is what's stopping that from being pushed over. Okay, well, we'll move on. Let's head over to Michael and we'll continue when we get back here. All right? All right, hey, we are back here on the okay. show right here on Shaw TV for show 2015. Doing a little bit of magic right here on a magic moment. And I have my friend Matt Carter once again. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you very, very much. I hear that uh, you did some traveling over the holidays. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Well, that's right, because today we're going to do a little bit of a uh, international trip. Nice. I know. This Fine is uh, very, very cool. Uh, I have a bunch of coins, and they come from different places. I want you to take a look at these. Uh, this is a Mexican centavo. It has a dragon on the back. It has a, uh, looks like a temple on the front. And this is a Chinese coin. Very cool. Not sure what it says, but on that side, I think it says Ida Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sold, sold. All right, so that's those. And uh, we also have this. This is a American half dollar Kennedy on the front. And we have an eagle on the back. All right, All fair? Right. Fair enough. All right, this is what we're gonna do. They're traveling coins. And I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna take the centavo and the Chinese coin. So the copper and brass coin go right here. Mm -hmm. Fair? Yeah. All right. Those are gonna go into my fist, just like so. And I have this silver coin. Now, we're gonna take the silver coin, we're gonna put it in my hand right here. You gotta watch it. Okay, whoop, let me try that again. All right, here we go. We're gonna take that silver coin, and that silver coin is gonna go into my hand, just like so. All right. Okay, I want you to watch it super, super close, because you're gonna watch it travel. Watch right. the silver coin close. You ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Let's take a look. <laughs> I know. What? They traveled across. Commodities trading. Look at without that. Without you All seeing right. them. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's do that one more time, okay? All right. The silver coins here. I want you to watch it close because it's going to happen on the count of three. Okay. Here we go, Matt. You ready? One, two. <laughs> I know. That was what? super, super fast, wasn't it? I've never seen anyone get changed that quickly in my life. I know, right crazy, now. crazy stuff. Wow. Now you're saying, that's great. That's great. You know, we have these coins from all these different places and it's everything's happening in my hands. What would you say if we could do this in your hands? Oh, <laughs> I know, yeah, it'd right? be pretty yeah. darn amazing. Drop the old. All right, this is what we're gonna do. I need your uh, left hand. Okay, so we have the three coins. Silver, copper, and brass, just Silver, like copper, so. Silver, brass. Okay, yeah. we're just gonna close them up, just like so. So put them in your hand. Squeeze them tight. Turn your hand over like so. All right. 
Now this is what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna reach in mm -hmm. underneath and just let me sneak out one coin. There we go. That looks like a silver coin to me, Matt. We're gonna leave that right there. Now watch this, it's gonna travel into your hand. You ready? <laughs> Here uh, we go. Okay. Watch this, the silver coin traveled into your hand. Here we go, let's see. No, let me try it again. That's once, let me try it again. Here's number two. Uh, no, that didn't work. Um, Hmm, I could have sworn that I put silver into your hand. Uh, do me a favor, take your hand, turn it over, and open it up really slow. And tell me what you have. <laughs> that looks like silver I've to me. I got two silver coins. I only got two silver coins, <laughs> and the brass coin and the copper coin are nowhere to be seen. <laughs> and that's it for another magic moment. First one of 2015. Matt, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies All right. and gentlemen, come Amazing on. Matt, come on, everybody. I've had the coins behind the ear trick happen, but that's that's a first there. Great stuff. Again, uh, Michael Barron's our in-house illusionist. Wonderful stuff. All right, you are watching the show right here on Shaw TV, and I'm still wondering if I can get some more money later on. Uh, so far on the show, we've uh, delved into the Qualicum Farmers Market. We've learned about uh, cheese making. Of course, met our musical guests, the clans. We've also had some uh, Pilates uh, training, getting our abs burning there. And as you, uh, again, just saw there, wowed again by Mr. Michael Barron's, our man of mystery, history in the making. Coming up, actually, we're going to do some more cheese making segments. Uh, again, not a reference to my joke, I promise. We're also going to find out. A, uh, no cheese. Come on, Todd. All right, we're also going to get into the, uh, the Walk for Memories, which is a great fundraiser put on by the BC Alzheimer's Society. Again, January is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. And for you dance fans out there, we're also going to find out where you can learn and dance the salsa right here in Nanaimo. But right here again, uh, we're asking you to get off your couch, get off your chair right now, get back on the floor. We're throwing it back over to the ever limber Brian Sugiyama. Again, uh, teaming up with Paul Horn to run us through some more Pilates training. Brian, back over to you. Thanks, Matt. And I'm here again with Paul Horn, and we're going to work on some upper body, body exercises yes. on the Pilates Reformer. Yes. So let's you explain what we're going to do here. Okay. This exercise is called chest expansion. So because of technology, technology is slowly breaking down our body and we always end up in this flexion state. So what we need to do is we need to strengthen the upper back and we need to open that front. So from there, you're gonna be nice and tall. Again, we're always looking at that core. So that little yeah. lift in the pelvic floor, gentle draw of the belly button. Good. Now you wanna pull with the arms and pull the shoulder blades together as you exhale. Holding that, you're gonna inhale and look over both shoulders. And then you're going to come back into the center and release that forward. Now, lots of times you look over both shoulders, but they won't go even. You'll get a lot of distance in one, and it'll just kind of creep yeah. over to the That's other. Right. That, that tends to be the mouse hand that always okay. creeps up there and starts shortening that. So, again, you want to make sure you've got that core nice and tall. Inhale, look over both shoulders back into the center. So again, lots of people with different shoulder issues too. So your shoulders are internally rotated. Now when you move your arm and you go to lift your arm over your head, it doesn't work quite like it's supposed to because it's not aligned. So you get all this kind of grinding and it prematurely wears the joint out. So you can get rotator cuff tears, you can get impingement, frozen shoulder. So this is really good to strengthen that upper back and again, open up that chest. Good, now this is one and this is working on the shoulders. Shoulder and upper back. Shoulder yes. and upper back. Now you have a different exercise you want me to do, which is crossing these over. Yeah, so if you cross your handles over. Okay. Now if you bend your arms at a 90, you bring that upper arm right along so underneath the shoulder. Yep. And then don't pinch it to the body. You want yep. a little bit of a space, and then you're just going to externally rotate both arms. And now we're working the rotator cuff. Okay. So the rotator cuff is typically weak in a lot of shoulder misalignment. So it's really, really important to strengthen that to help get that shoulder nice and strong so that when you do move, it does move effectively. So this isn't really that hard in terms of resistance, but it's giving you a good linear workout? Well, the, the thing is, is if you use too much weight, you're going to use the big primary movers. You're going to yeah. miss those small stabilizing muscle groups. Wonderful. So you want to target those small, small muscle groups. All right, and this machine, this reformer, really does everything by keeping you working in straight lines? Absolutely, so every exercise in Pilates is a full body exercise. So you have to be thinking about every piece of your body during yeah. even just a rotator cuff exercise. All right, so Paul, we have on the screen how to reach you and that's through your website? Yeah, so my website's there or you can call me at 713-6522 yeah. or I'm at Core Essentials, I've got two reformers there, so we can do couples, mother-daughter, father-son, uh, and we're on Portsmouth just behind Costco. Wonderful. Well, let's head over to our entertainment, and let's go to the clans. 
Flutter butterfly, flutter on the sky. Flutter butterfly, wonder where my love hides. Flutter butterfly, flutter on the sky. Flutter butterfly, wonder where my love hides. From the river bend, dancing with your friends on sparkling summer days we hope would never end. Round the river bend, dancing with your friends on sparkling summer days. That was great. Welcome back. Paula is amazing. Um, look at this. We're going to be pulling cheese. Now, making cheese is incredible. And you offer courses. You teach people how to make cheese. Can you tell us a little bit about that I while sure I do a little do. pulling? Because I want to play. <laughs> so, yeah, what turned out to be. Um, uh, a hobby about four years ago uh, turned into a business about three years ago. Um, I have had girlfriends ask me to teach them how to create uh, and this these is things. Creating already. Yeah, and um, so then it just sort of ended up turning into cheese making courses, which Great. is fantastic. And I teach Great. on Gabriola, as well as here in town. Um, okay. There is Lucky's Liquor Store has a demo yep. kitchen upstairs. Oh, they do. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. also down in uh, Ladysmith at the Worldly Gourmet. Mm -hmm. I do also have a social media cheese making classes page and post like I was just up in Campbell River down in Duncan oh, um, and in Courtney <laughs> um, so yeah I do and That's I'm it. happy to bring people over to Gabriola you can learn anything from these soft cheeses to brie to making hard cheeses even well, cambazola you've made this beautiful look at all this beautiful cheese that you've yeah. made and now and what are we making now look we're at gonna that. create this is hand-stretched mozzarella which from start to finish uh, is 30 seconds 
Uh, so 30 minutes. Gonna, sorry, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, because <laughs> yeah. we started at the beginning of the show. That's right. And I saw you put the milk in there. Yeah, yeah as it was it. all going. And it turned into cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a way that you may or may not um, have had it before, which is gorgeous. And actually, oh, you know, you can go. one up all of your friends when you're making pizza by rolling this little baby up. And you can put anything into it rolling it up, slicing it up, and then putting it on top of your wow. pizza, which is like, you know. <gasps> That's ultimate, because you can one -upping see everybody. do put mozzarella, of course, on your pizza, yeah. and a little bocconcini, but yep. this is So this will be um, like a true Napolese pizza in the sense that it doesn't melt like the store-bought ones. Um, so it'll remain in its shape. And but so the, the actual cheese won't melt? It's, oh, okay. Uh, it'll just stay in sort of, if you slice it into so rounds, it'll beautiful. stay into rounds. So what I'm going to show you is, just a way to serve it and also you can put this on top of your pizza or and yeah eating it just as eating it is works amazing. really well too especially so, with prosciutto in it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know stuff. farmers market we didn't maybe there's somebody who has uh, tomatoes that are growing in a greenhouse That's somewhere right. especially uh, but at this time of year sometimes yeah yeah, yeah 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 but summertime absolutely caprese salads oh my gosh it's just incredible beautiful so I I'm do this I'm just impressed by how easy it is to act. well not easy if you know how to yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well and you know what that's the thing that I love is empowering people to take back their food as well as create gorgeous food um, that really isn't that difficult and, to make. And look what I created. I know. Speaking of <laughs> creations. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? It's just great. She's... <laughs> There you go. I love it. It's our cheese. Oh, I know. So <laughs> just time. another beautiful way to um, to serve the mozzarella. That is beautiful. Everybody gets to eat it afterwards. And then, you know, the soft goat cheeses as well as I didn't the hard touch pressed cheeses. So, yeah. And so just explain a little bit about what the this one is. It's the soft cheese, you said, It's right? a soft goat's cheese. Goat cheese. Um, chev. Um, so in my classes, I teach with store-bought pasteurized milk. Um, I have to with Viha. And you right. can create these cheeses in your own home. Wow. Um, I give you all the cultures as well as the instructions so that you can replicate the class, you know, afterwards. At home, yeah. yeah, of course. Plus, you also get to take home swag. You get to home t take home cheese, <laughs> which is brilliant. Hey? That is it's brilliant. Nice. All of my classes I do pair with a wine as well. So, look at that. yeah. She even brought wine. Yeah. And this wine is beautiful. It's a beautiful uh, rose, mm. very, very. Um, not sweet, gorgeous. To go uh, with the cheeses. Yeah, yeah. What? So tell me some of your other cheeses yep. here. So this is a pepper jack cheese, uh, brie, brie, with I'm a nice bloomy rind. That. This is an alpine style tome. And a the, very young. Is that wax on yep, there? Yep, food grade wax. Uh, when I first started making cheeses, I used beeswax from right. hives that we have on our property on Gabriola. Um, but you can buy, you know, <laughs> these online as well. Um, I do carry cheese cultures as well. Great. Um, so we have a young Colby and a Swiss cheese. Perfect. I so, can't wait to try them all, Paula. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, I you're really so welcome. appreciate your being here. That was just awesome. Excellent. And Thank now you. we are going to go over to Brian on the main set. Thanks, Anna. Today I have with me here Jane Hope, who is the support and education coordinator with the Alzheimer's Society of BC in Nanaimo. And Jane, can you tell us a little bit about a big event that's coming up province wide on January 25th? Alrighty, um, on January 25th, we have our annual um, fundraiser. It's our largest fundraiser of the year, and it's called the Investors Group Walk for Memories. And it is taking place at the Nanaimo uh, Yacht Club at 11 o'clock um, on Sunday, January 25th. And I believe registration is at 10 o'clock. Good. And it's, I've been at it for the last three years, I think, or more, and it's just a great event of really enthusiastic people who all have some connection in their family to Alzheimer's and want to help to raise funds to look at what they can do to provide programs. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the programs when we're talking about Awareness Month um, for the Alzheimer's Society. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So the funds do go to programs and services in our local community, and we provide um, education programs for people that have dementia, education programs for people that are caregivers. We have support groups for both people with early dementia as well as caregivers. We also provide a wonderful program called Minds in Motion, which is a social fitness program. Um, again, it is for both the person living with dementia as well as um, their care partners. And it provides a wonderful opportunity for them to um, do about 45 minutes of, of uh, fitness and then probably 45 minutes of social time. Um, 
And oftentimes when people are diagnosed with dementia, what happens is they start to socially withdraw. They're uncomfortable in larger groups. Um, and so they can come to the Minds in Motion program and there's other people there that are um, experiencing the same things and, and they tend to get along really well and, and quite enjoy that program. So in essence, it becomes a social network and support group for these people. That's right. And yes. their caregivers, more, most Absolutely. importantly. I think it's this, uh, this situation with Alzheimer's and dementia is very, very hard on caregivers. You're absolutely right, Brian. Um, caring for somebody with dementia is a very um, time-consuming, stressful um, job, and it, it just takes a lot of time uh, to do that. So yeah, getting out and, and meeting with other people that are going through the same thing can be really beneficial, for sure. Okay, wonderful. And, and obviously, all these features like um, exercise and networks and uh, social networks and keeping active and then testing and working with your brain which is some of the activities that go on I guess in your Minds in Motion program it's it's also exercise for the mind. Absolutely yes so one of the things that um, we talk about in order to reduce the risk of developing dementia is exercise as well as um, social activity staying social being involved with other people is really good for our brain um, getting lots of sleep eating a good diet a, like a Mediterranean diet um, and protecting your head as well is really quite important. Good, good. And again, to recap, people can get information and, and start to collect pledges for this Walk for Memories by going to the website, and that website is on screen, but you can tell us right now. Walkformemories.com. Okay. Um, and that's a great place to go. They can also come to our office, and if they'd like to uh, give us a call, they can reach us at 250 um, 734 4170 and um, and find information about our programs as well. Well, that's that's great information. Please make it an effort to come out. It's a great event, and uh, again, that's Sunday, January 25th. Just a half an hour, hour out of your day. It's a great event. Talk to other people about uh, their experiences with family members who have had Alzheimer's and dementia. So thank you to Jane for coming. Let's head to Hillary and some salsa dancing. Yeah, thank you so much, Brian. Uh, joined today by Bob and Erica Wilson, a couple of salsa dancers behind Salsa Thursdays at the Globe. Um, Bob, tell me what you enjoy about uh, salsa dancing. That's just a great atmosphere. There's lots of different people from all different cultures having a lot of fun together. And yeah, everybody's just really happy. And that's the thing I love about it the most. Yeah, dancing gets you happy. So it's a it's like a drop-in event. You pay ten dollars. You stop by the the Globe on Thursday nights, and uh, you don't have to be a salsa dancing expert to take part, right? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, you don't need to have any experience. You don't need a partner. Uh, you know, you can just you can just come and try it out. Uh, there's a beginner lesson that starts off around nine o'clock, and then we just run DJ music the rest of the night, so you can socialize, mingle, practice. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a really great event. It's a lot of fun. So you don't have to have a partner and no, no experience. That's right. that's good. I I mean I've never salsa danced before. The only salsa I'm familiar with is uh, tomato flavored, but uh, but uh, I, I think uh, it sounds like a like a great event. And what kind of a turnout do you guys get on a typical night? Uh, anywhere from 30 to 50 people. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a really wide range of of ages too. People from about 19 all the way to people in their 60s. <laughs> Cool, so it's a great way to get out and meet people. Not too much going going on on a Thursday night anyway, right? So it's a good excuse to get out of the house. And yeah. tell me, it, it seems like it's a pretty good workout. It is a really good workout. Um, yeah, I, I don't use a gym or anything. I salsa dance probably about three or four times a week. And yeah, it really keeps you in shape. It's cardio and kind of a, kind of a full body workout. The more you get into it, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, it's a great way to exercise and meet people. And it's just a great community event as well. So. And you were telling me that there's salsa events all over the world. And, in lots of different cities, that it's, it's almost like an underground salsa scene. But once yeah. you know it's there, then uh, then it's a great uh, it's a, it's a you know well established community. Yeah, it really is. Um, there's you know all over the world, like London, New York, uh, Seattle. We just came back from there. Um, there's a big festival in Vancouver actually going on in a few weeks here. So um, yeah, it's it's really kind of underground. But once you know about it, anywhere that you go, really, if you search salsa dancing, like on Google salsa dancing, um, you'll find it. So it's it's really quite widespread, yeah. 
Okay, and, and Erica, you look great. You Do you have to dress up to go to salsa dancing? You can wear whatever you want. Uh, you know, people come in anything from a pair of jeans to like a crazy like neon shirt or something, you know, <laughs> whatever you feel. It's a very self-expressive dance. So if you're someone who really likes to dress up and you don't have much of an excuse to do that in Nanaimo, um, it's a really great chance to, you know, do your hair and like do your makeup and wear something fancy. Um, or you can just come in your casual clothes. So it's, yeah, it's very, and I like the shoes. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like uh, we've got some music queued up for you, and uh, you're maybe going to do a little bit of a salsa demo for us. Thankfully, I'm not going to have to dance today, but uh, I'll let you guys show off some of your moves. Can you describe to me, uh, Bob, what uh, what kind of what kind of dance are going to? I mean, obviously it's salsa, but uh, what will what will we be seeing from you? Uh, just an example of what we call social dancing. Um, as you learn, as you dance, you develop moves and combinations and you learn to uh, improvise with it on the dance floor. Yeah. And you guys have been dancing together for like six years, so you've probably got some secret moves worked out. <laughs> yes, we have lots of sweet moves. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's not choreography. Uh, there is, you know, some people do perform with choreography, but this is just improvised, so. Excellent, okay, well I'm gonna turn the floor over to you and show us, show us your moves. Wilson. Come on, studio, big round of applause. Big round of applause. Awesome stuff. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, Bob Eric Wilson, uh, channel again, uh, Salsa Thursdays at the Globe. Learn how to salsa dance. Uh, again, you don't need someone to go with or to teach you. If you already know, head on down there as well. Great stuff. And uh, Erica, great jazz singer as well. So great to see uh, dancers, singers, artists uh, contributing to the cultural and art scene here in Nanaimo. Wonderful stuff. All right, and I must admit, when you do all sorts of uh, crazy dancing like this, you need to have a really good diet. So when it comes to dancing, I recommend some uh, mambo pizza, uh, oh. probably some, uh, some lemon merengue pie, uh, yeah. a glass of that orange drink what's it called I think it's um, it's called uh, tang go tang tang oh tang yes uh, or if you want something warm you can have some uh, cha 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 tea a really good stuff there as well anyways uh, getting some angry looks over there so before there's a uh, rumba in the jungle and they may uh, drop La Bamba on me and you know I might not make <laughs> I might not make it out of jive uh, <laughs> Samba somebody hold me quick all right so <laughs> Sorry, Todd, I apologize. All right, time to say thank you so much to our guests, all of our volunteers and staff uh, in front of the camera and behind the scenes. A big thank you to uh, Milano's as well for feeding our hungry crew. And hey, you can find the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. You can also find us on Twitter. And hey, you can find previous episodes of the show on our Facebook page or on our Shaw TV, Central Vancouver Island, and I'm a YouTube page as well. Find all the, uh, again, all the great guests we've had over the last number of years. And hey, if you got a great uh, story idea or if you want to be featured on the show, just give a drop us a line to our executive producer Melissa Hall. Her email is melissa.hall at sjrb.ca. Again, we'd love to hear from you and love to get you on the show as well. To finish off, of course, one more song from our musical guest in behind me, The Clan. So great to have him here. So let's send it out here. First show of 2015. Clan saying goodbye on the show on Shaw TV. Oh, the night that Patty Murphy died is a night I'll never forget. Some of the boys got loaded drunk and they ain't got sober yet. As long as the bottle was passed around, every man was feeling gay. Oh, Leary 
came with bagpipes for music for to play. That's how they showed their respect for Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and shame that they winked at one another. Now every drink in the place is full the night Pat Murphy died. As Mrs. Murphy sat in the corner pouring out her grief, Kelly and his gang came tearing down the street. They went into an empty room and a bottle of whiskey stole. They kept that bottle with the corpse to keep the whiskey cold. That's how they showed their respect for Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and shame that they winked at one another. Now every drink in the place is full the night Pat Murphy died. About two o'clock in the morning after emptying the jug, Doyle does up the ice box lit to see poor Patty's mug. We stopped the clock so Mrs. Murphy couldn't tell the time. At a quarter after two, we argued it was nine. That's how they showed their respect for Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and shame that they winked at one another. Now every drink in the place is full the night Pat Murphy. Purse on Georgia Street outside Sundance Saloon. We all went in at half past eight and staggered out at noon. We went up to the graveyard, so holy and sublime. Found out when we got there, we left the corpse behind. That's how they showed their respect for Patty Murphy. That's how they showed their honor and their pride. They said it was a sin and shame that they winked at one another. Now every drink in the place is full tonight. Patty Murphy died, it's a night I'll never forget. Some of those boys got loaded drunk and they ain't got sober yet. As long as the bottle was passed around, every man was feeling gay. O'Leary came with bagpipes for music for to play. That's how they showed their respect for Patty Murphy. That's how 